live and local sports talk from the Upstate or the Upstate with GMAC, JC, and Alonzo. This is the Huddle on ESPN Upstate. 222, welcome back in to the Huddle, ESPN Upstate. I'm Greg McKinney. JC Sherbert is here, Alonzo as well. Get back to your calls in a few minutes at 844-477-3776. If you want to go ahead and text us on the Carolina Coaches RB Superstore text line, 71307. Use the keyword ESPN at the beginning. Let's go to the uh, guest line and bring in Kerry Rich, former Gamecock uh, point guard and uh, with the big spur and doing all kinds of good things in the Columbia area. Kerry, how are you? Doing wonderful, doing wonderful. And thank you guys so much for, for having me on in the upstate. I've had the opportunity to be on several places, but not the upstate often. So I, I, um, I'm thankful for this opportunity. Well, we appreciate you coming on. We can, uh, we can make that uh, a little more regular and we appreciate, uh, JC setting this up with you. Um, talk about the game last night. I assume you made it over. Yeah, I was there. Um, I, uh, I was there, my normal, uh, seat right behind the bench and, uh, um, Anybody that's followed this basketball team knew that this was an opportunity, a big opportunity for South Carolina to uh, maybe validate its relevance. I didn't think it was an end-all, be-all situation, meaning you know, if they won the game, it wasn't going to be the end of the world, and vice versa. If they lost the game, it wasn't going to be the end of the world. But with this being a big week, having to go to Rupp Arena uh, later in the week, just an opportunity to beat a very, very good Florida team, by the way, um, who was really good defensively. I'd heard and read so much about their defensive versatility and so many things that they've been able to bring to the floor. But it was my first time seeing any team match the level of defensive intensity, defensive effort of South Carolina. It, they did it, and credit to South Carolina. South Carolina had an opportunity because of enough offense to muster, muster up there at the end uh, to get it over the hump. And, you know, the South Carolina basketball team in years past under Frank Martin, they've always been – really good defensively. It's been the constant. It's been the one thing that all of us could count on when watching this basketball team. Unfortunately, the talent level and the offensive production just were not there. Well, now, with where this program is, what Frank Martin has been able to do with this program, the constant of being really, really good defensively, number one in the country when it comes to defensive efficiency, they now have enough talent, they now have enough offensive production to supplement what they do when it comes to defensive effort, defensive intensity. Really big win for South Carolina last night. Yeah, the Gamecocks uh, only scored 21 points in the first half. They were down by seven at halftime, Kerry. What did you see different from them in the second half that uh, enabled them to turn that thing around? They got better defensively, and they allowed that defense to turn into some Turn it to some offense. Um, there at the end, and Darius Thornwell signed in his normal, his usual role of being the closer. Um, he was really good down the stretch. Uh, not only did he get to the basket, uh, but he also got to the free throw line because he played with an aggressive nature. Uh, P.J. Dozier was good in the second half, especially there at the end, made a really big play. Uh, coming out of that timeout. Matter of fact, I was sitting with a, a couple of friends. A former Clemson player, Andre Bovang, was one of my best friends. He was sitting next to me, and we were talking uh, about that particular play. And I told him, and I said, coming out of this timeout, Frank is drawing up something that's going to call for P.J. Dozier or Sundarius Stonewall to attack the basket and put the pressure on the official to blow the whistle. And P.J. did a terrific job of reading that screen and getting into uh, taking advantage of that crack and finishing at the basket. But uh, I think that was the difference. They just uh, allowed defensively to to turn into some offense, and they played with confidence down the stretch. And because of the success that they've had last year, even though they didn't get into the NCAA tournament, coupled that with what they've been able to do this year, there's an expectation to win these close games now. And I think about this game. I think about the Georgia game down in Athens a few weeks ago I was at. Uh, because of the back and forth and just the nature of how close the games were, South Carolina would have lost those games in previous years. Now, because there's an expectation to win these games as opposed to hoping to win, that's why they're able to make big plays down the stretch, such as we saw last night. Kerry, uh, Chris Silva seems to have made a lot of strides since last year. Uh, talk to me about his development uh, as a player. I mean, he was a pretty good defender last year, pretty good rebounder. Offense has come around, though, and he's gotten pretty good from the free throw line, I, I think. Uh, just talk about him and, you know, not only his development as a player, but what he means to the team. Yeah, that's a great point. And um, I actually wrote about him this morning. Chris Silva is known as uh, 
Uh, he's a tremendous athlete when it comes to just sheer athleticism. And I'm just talking sheer athleticism. I'm not talking about offensive abilities. I'm not talking about anything outside of just athleticism. Um, I'll put him up against anybody in the country. Being six nine, that can run and jump block shots he's as good as they come what he's been able to do the last couple of games and and i mentioned this uh, about a week ago he's been the unsung hero of this basketball team naturally when you think about south carolina you talk about the guards thornwell dozier notice even though he's been up and down but uh, against georgia he was able to make some key shots uh, some timely shots for this gamecock basketball team when georgia was making a run well same thing last night in a very close game um, against Florida when South Carolina needed a basket. They threw the ball down in there to him, and he turned around and made a big-time pro move with the with the left hand and finished. Now he's adding that to what he's able to do from a shot blocker perspective, what he's able to do from just a, a, a floor runner, a, a guy that impacts the paint on both ends of the floor. Uh, with what he's able to do, uh, I think it adds tremendous balance, and it takes – just a little bit of pressure off of Thornwell and, and, and Dozier to make plays for everybody else on every single possession. Dwayne Notice is a spot-up shooter. He's not really going to be a playmaker. But if if Silver can find a way to consistently bring that type of offensive production to the floor for the Gamecocks, it opens up the floor for Dozier and Thornwell to attack even more. Otherwise, it makes it very difficult to uh, create anything in the paint, especially when you're playing against a team like Florida, because they challenge everything at the rim. I mean, not only do they guard their yard, uh, they help and recover, but once they help and recover, they're still good enough, they're still athletic enough to challenge everything at the rim. And that was a big, big challenge for South Carolina to overcome last night. Fortunately, they were able to overcome it down the stretch. Kerry, you know, the, the game at Kentucky this Saturday is going to get a lot of hype, and uh, rightfully so, to the two undefeated teams in the league going at each other. Um how do you see that one sort of playing out, and what what are the keys for South Carolina there? And then after you get done with that, I'm going to talk to you about beyond Kentucky. Well, you, you know what? Um, I, I think anybody that's going into Kentucky um, is going to be tremendously challenging. Um, uh, South Carolina, just like every other team, because it remains – uh, one of the most difficult places to play in all of college basketball. You couple that with the fact that from a talent perspective, they're as good as uh, we're going to find in college basketball when it comes to sheer talent. Now, with that being said, uh, South Carolina um, isn't just showing up at Rupp Arena just because the game is on the schedule. South Carolina is going in a very confident basketball team. Now, are you going to need more as a team? to get over that hump and beat a very, very good Kentucky team? Absolutely. But if you're confident and you're not wowed by uh, the pageantry and some of the other things, the side stories and, you know, the history and the tr- tradition that will certainly be a part of the narrative once you get there, then you got a chance. South Carolina has a chance. They, you know, um, now they have to be really, really good to get it done, obviously. I was with Frank Martin this past Monday um, at a basketball event I did um, on MLK Day, and uh, we spent the vast majority of the day together. We were just talking basketball, and, you know, uh, throughout the conversation, he talked about where the program was four years ago compared to where it is now, and he talked about how they were always good defensively, but now, you know, he has athletes for the most part that can match just about any team in the SEC. He has enough offensive production that can match just about any team in the SEC, and he feels really, really good about this basketball team. Now, it's going to be really difficult, but I'll also say this. Um, South Carolina is a great defensive basketball team, and I don't use that term loosely. Um, I think they're going to present a challenge that Kentucky hasn't seen from a defensive perspective on the perimeter. And, you you know, let's not forget that even though these guys are really, really talented, uh, they're still somewhat young. They're still young, somewhat inexperienced. And uh, I think Mike Tyson said it best, that we all have a plan until you get punched in the mouth. Okay. Well, South Carolina, <laughs> with the way they're playing, they're playing with an angry attitude. The, you know, we often talk about teams taking on the personality of its head coach. Well, people that see Frank Martin on the sideline, they see an angry angry coach. Well, watching this basketball team, they're seeing an angry basketball team playing with tremendous defensive effort. That's what they're going to have to pack when they take off for Lexington, Kentucky Friday afternoon, but they will not be intimidated. They won't be afraid. They'll need their absolute best effort, and they're going to have to impact the game so that Kentucky is not on this A game on that particular day. 
South Carolina sitting at 15 and three overall, five and zero in the SEC. Uh, you know, Kentucky's going to be a tough deal. Let's say they drop that one, but then Kerry, they come back home to Auburn. They go at Missouri, at LSU, and then have a chance to sweep Georgia on February 1st. You know, this is the type of stretch that was kind of a bugaboo for this team last year, losing mm-hmm. to teams that were low in the RPI on the road, mm-hmm. uh, which, you know, I thought they should have made the tournament last year, but, but, you know, this, this was costly. You know, so how do you get back up for Auburn and then go to Missouri and go to LSU? And is it, is this team because they're so, I mean, last year's team was good defensively, don't get me wrong, but this year's team, as you said, was one of, is one of the best in the country. Is the way they play defense, is that helpful to avoid letdowns? And, and I'm thinking of, of like the Tennessee game, uh, on the road where they didn't really play all that well, but still won by 10 points uh, against an inferior team. Um, does that help them maybe avoid some of the pitfalls as we get into the, the conference stretch that's, you know, a little unremarkable, but, uh, it, there's still teams that could beat South Carolina. Well, it certainly helps, but I think, uh, what serves as the main motivation or the primary source of motivation is, uh, the feeling that they were subjected to by not getting into the NCAA tournament last year. Um, they played well enough throughout the course of the season. Um, while I'd hoped that this basketball team was going to get into the NCAA tournament, looking back at it and looking at some of those key losses, Missouri, Tennessee, um, Georgia, those losses were untimely uh, for South Carolina. And, of course, I don't think there's any loss uh, that's timely, but when you're trying to get into the NCAA tournament, when you're new, to, you know, when you're the new kid on the block, and everything that you do down the stretch, you're still trying to convince voters. You're trying to uh, still convince those guys that are straddling, uh, straddling the line, straddling the fence in terms of whether uh, you're you're pro Gamecock or, or not thinking they deserve it. Uh, you got to do almost everything in your power to make sure you're convinced those guys that you're you're legit. And unfortunately, as much as I uh, wanted South Carolina to get into the tournament. Um, I, I think South Carolina shot itself in the foot down the stretch by not taking care of business. And on that particular Sunday, um, selection Sunday, I was down with the team. And uh, I'll never forget uh, the feeling uh, that was in the air in that room um, as a guy that's 20 years removed from the locker room, 20 years removed from being a player. Uh, walking out of that locker room, guys, I felt the pain that those players felt. I felt the pain that those coaches felt. It was such a letdown. It was so painful to see those young men that those coaches go through um, and, and feel the hurt that they felt on that particular day. That's the primary source of motivation. That is what, what is going to get them through. Regardless of what happens at Kentucky, that is what is going to get them through uh, the rest of the season. And unlike last year, I think because of the experience, uh, because of some of the other things in place for this team to win, uh, they'll get through that little patch. And I think it'll be very, very favorable for the Gamecocks. When you look at this team, you often talk about what teams need to be successful or get to the NCAA tournament. you got to have a few things. you got to have tremendous guard play. you got to have experience. you got to have size. you got to have depth. you got to have a few impact players who could impact games at any given moment and help your team get over the hump. Well, South Carolina has all of those things, plus a little confidence because of what happened last year. Kerry Rich, the former point guard for the uh, South Carolina Gamecocks, also does some work for TheBigSpur.com. Kerry, we appreciate it, man. Thanks for coming on. We'll get you on again soon. Sounds good. Thank you so much for having me, guys. All right, Kerry, appreciate it. 844-477-3776, text line 71307. We'll break and come back with more here in the huddle on ESPN Upstate. <laughs> 